I normally start every episode with a cheery hola and I let you know how things are going but truth is I'm a little bit sad we got absolutely hammered by United but we won the first leg too and we were the better team we deservedly won that they hit the bar with a penalty as well but we deserved to win and there was belief uh, and then we went to Old Trafford and Man United did Man United things and absolutely destroyed us um, and I'm very sad because I, I genuinely had belief that we could do it but unfortunately not as you can see our good forms continued uh, apart from that uh, United result is that was a blip really we followed our 2-1 defeat by Atletico with a 3-2 defeat to Bilbao in what was a really important game and two mistakes for the same goal cost us it was Antonio Luna that gave the ball away to Inaki Williams his shot was saved by uh, Mvogo who went through he went through one-on-one -on -one. his shot was saved but Mvogo parried the ball straight back to him and, yeah, Williams was able to tap into a practically empty net. We then drew 0-0 with Espanyol, which was really disappointing because they've been pants this year. And then we drew one all away at already rated, already rated, already relegated Cordoba. 1-0 up inside two minutes, thanks to Alex Moodle. I thought, oh, we'll go on and grab a few. But, no, a penalty in the 70th minute allowed them back into the match. And then, as you can see, yeah, we got absolutely, um, absolutely pummeled. By uh, by Manchester United. So this is how the land lies. Real Madrid have already won the league. They're 11 points clear. They've absolutely romped it. Sociedad, Barcelona, Atletico. They've all uh, confirmed their Champions League spot. This is us. We currently sit in 8th. But we have a game in hand on everyone above us. If we beat Valladolid today. Who are fighting relegation still. 5 points adrift with 2 games to go. So they need to win today in, to have any hope of staying alive. Um, but if we beat them, we will go into sixth. So we will be in the driving seat. Of course, we do have Sociedad on the last day of the season. So that will be tough. But win today and we put ourselves in the best possible position. I said that he was in talks to leave and he's finally agreed to join. He went. He's going to Russia to play for Akmat. Wilfred Boney is going to be leaving us after three years. It's sad to see him go, but look at those stats. Realistically, he didn't contribute all that much, but it was still a pleasure to see him here. And, uh, yeah, best wishes to Wilfred. And we've actually uh, brought in a replacement. Say hello, people, to Krzysztof Piatek. Yes, the man from Genoa, the Polish striker, has agreed to join us on a free transfer at the end of his contract He's being paid 14 grand a week now. We may or may not be paying him 100 grand a week. But, you know, look at some of these stats. He's, uh, he's a quality quality player. I know he's been in real life. He's being touted by some of the big clubs. But I feel that this guy could really add something to our strike force. He's scored a few goals. Genoa have been struggling in Serie A. But, uh, yeah, Piatek is coming in and I'm delighted. that He's not the only player I tried to sign as well. I tried to sign a number of players. If we have a look at their expiring contracts, if this decides to load. Delaney, I tried to sign him. He wanted so many promises and so many of them were unrealistic. So uh, I just decided to ditch that. Uh, Meza Ozil as well. I tried signing him. He didn't want to talk to us. He was on the transfer list as well. He's like 33. He wanted 400 grand a week. Um, he said that we he didn't think we had the financial muscle. I was like, yeah, you're probably right, pal. Di Maria we had a look at as well. We did get into negotiations with him, but he wanted too much money. Same with Jerome Boateng as well. He wanted too much money. Brozovic is someone we looked at. Um, although the last time I checked, he wasn't interested in talking. I don't know if he's changed his mind. He has changed his mind now. Interesting. Um, but yeah, he was someone we looked at, and Dejan Lovren as well. We actually had a deal agreed with Dejan Lovren, but then uh, the Piatek deal, the Piatek deal, sorry, came through, so we cancelled the Lovren one and went for Piatek instead. But there's some uh, some pretty good players still contracts expiring. Abraham would be s someone decent. A lot of them on the aging side though, someone like Conti, Sigurdsson, Classy, you know, not too bad players. So. Um, 
But yeah, we've got our man for now. And uh, if we fancy anyone else, then I'm sure we can go in and have a look at them. But uh, I just noticed Benzema there. Interesting. But yeah, we won't have a look at that now for now. If there's anything else, of course, you'll see it next episode. This is the last episode of this season. Hopefully, we can confirm European football again for next season. So, Vidalid in the first game in today's episode. This is the team that we are going with. And, uh, yeah, full strength as possible, I would say. In Vogel in goal, Robles at right back. Sam Powell finally back from injury and Keane partners him at the back. Luna is playing just because Marcelli Hermes is struggling for a little bit of fitness. Seri and Horta in the middle of midfield. Horta's actually been out with an injury for a few weeks but he's uh, finally back to fitness Cabo on the right, Muller on the left Wampy number 10 and Santos up top, I feel that Michael Santos's days up top could be numbered but he will definitely be at least our backup next season uh, I imagine I'll use one of the youth players just in and around the squad as well just notice Stuart Armstrong there in the Viadalidzi which is uh, a little bit interesting Vardalid are actually in uh, in good form, so this will be an interesting game, but look at that pitch, that is disgusting. Nevertheless, we get the games underway, we know the, we know the score, if we win we put ourselves in a good position, but Vardalid have to win to stay alive as well, so both teams are going to be going for it I'm sure, and it should hopefully make for an interesting game. Well I say hopefully it will be a good game, we've got to half time with no highlights whatsoever. So, uh, you know, that's always that's always good. Corner, highlight, first one of the game. Santos is there. Massive collects the corner, though. And I'm guessing there's going to be something else after the highlight. There is launched up to Katabia. And now we run away from it, which isn't good. Salazar, someone... Uh, oh. Stoyil, Stoyilkovic, that's what I'm going to go with. With the scrappiest goal you've ever seen. Poor defending from us, though. Why we backed off Katabi, I have no idea. A good ball from Salazar. Good save by Invoga for the initial shot. But again, unfortunately, he falls straight back to the striker. And uh, why did it go a goal ahead? And they could come forward again for Fana. Stuart Armstrong all alone in the middle. Daniele Verdi tries to bend one and he hits the post. What an effort that was. Unfortunately for them, it hits the outside of the post rather than the inside. But we live to fight another day. Cabo comes forward now, driving forward. Hasn't got many options. He's got a cut back to Juan P. Good run by Muller. Going to get a good ball in. Santos is there. And at the near post, Santos tucks it away. 11th goal of the season. He's had a fine last couple of months. And a good passage of play from us. Summing out of nothing. We've looked pretty dreadful in this game. A lovely ball from Juan P. Muller brings it down brilliantly. Santos does excellent to get across his man. And finds the back of the net. And we are back in this game. Okay, just under five minutes to go. And it could be one chance. Although I'm not sure which team it's going to go for. It might go our way. But there was sloppy possession retention in the middle of the midfield. But we come forward in numbers. Muller's there. He strikes. And the goal's been given. I thought he was offside. But I'll happily take it. Alex Muller with his eighth of the season. With a couple of minutes to go. This is going to be interesting to see. We pile forward in numbers. You can see all the midfield there. And I, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I thought he was offside. Let's have a look. When does the ball leave Santos's feet? There. Oh, no. Great time run. I'd, you know, fair play. Who's that defender? Lejeune. He's had an absolute mare there. Right. Do our usual then when we get into this position. Let's sweat it out. This is a really important victory, so I do not want to throw this away. This is like when you keep the ball on FIFA when you score late and you just pass it around the back and really pee off the other person. But, uh, oh, come on. Right. I mean, from the stats, we've dominated the game. The, the chances wouldn't suggest that. But we're a minute over the allotted time. And there we go, the final whistle. What a turnaround that was in the second half. Michael Santos and Alex Muller helping us claim all three points. And I think that result relegates via the lid as well, unfortunately. Never like to do that. It does. So that wraps up the relegation. Our bogey team, Levante, have been relegated. Thank God we don't have to play them next season. But as we said, this puts us in a good position. A tough trip to Sociedad to end the season. 
two out of four will claim the Europa League spots. Hopefully one of those will be us. Let's have a look who the other teams are playing. So if we have a look then, Bilbao are away at Sevilla. That's a tough game. Vallecano at home to Atletico and Hetafe away to Barcelona. So the fixtures are really, well, you'd say they'd fall in our favour, but um, everyone's got a tough game. So it's going to be really interesting to see how it pans out. Also, Sim Fimbergosen is top scorer. Love that from Vallecano. But yeah, that'll be the next game in a week's time and I'll bring that to you in a second. The final game of the season then, the big one, and I've slightly rotated the side, despite us playing well last time out of chain shape, but we've gone to a more balanced approach, and some players playing in unfamiliar positions, mainly, well, Juan P is the only one doing that, but uh, yeah, and Vogel's in goal, Robles right back, some power keen in centre halves, Luna at left back, same back four, back five I should say, Dem is going to come in, it's going to be his last game, He's going to play the defensive midfield role. Seri and Jose Carlos Sanchez are going to get a rare game in the middle of midfield. Seri, this could well be his goodbye. I haven't decided whether I'm going to try and get him again next season. Juan P played really well in the last game. I didn't want to drop him, so I've shifted him out to the right. Muller is going to be on the left. Santos up top. A few options on the bench. No Andre Horto, though. His form has really dipped recently, so unfortunately we've already seen the last of him. This is it then. We're not deciding a title or anything like that, but still, to continue to get European football is massive. I didn't realise we were at home. I thought we were away. That changes things slightly. And uh, Sociedad gone for a fairly negative formation, although some good players, but Cambo and Mayoral is a very good strike partnership. Schurler in there as well, former man Diego Gonzalez. So, their Champions League for a reason. I'm actually a little bit nervous for this game. I'm not going to lie. Um, but good enough team talk. We can book our spot in the Europa League. I have the faith that we are going to book our slot in next season's Europa League. All these questions. Uh, it's being rested. Yeah, why not for the last game of the season? I'm not telling you my tactics. Right, finally, questions are done. We're playing in a black kit at home. I'm not sure why. But uh, nevertheless, let's get... And Getafe have gone 1-0 up at Barcelona, I've just seen. Well, that's certainly interesting. Uh, and Valencia are winning as well. Uh, I think, don't think Valencia are in the race, are they? No, they're not. So, um, yeah, what, what a start. Six minutes in, Pereira puts Getafe 1-0 up. But we know as long as we do our jobs here, then we'll be absolutely fine. We're over half an hour into this game and there's not been a single shot yet. 40 minutes, no shots. Is this really how it's going to be? Okay, no shots whatsoever in the first half. Let's have a look. Getafe still winning. Excellent. Vallecano 0-0 for Atleti. Bilbao are drawing as well. They've needed a pen to come back into that one. And I'm going to say this is pathetic. As you can see, we fall all the way down to 8th as it stands. Valencia are in the race. I did not realise that. They must have had a game in hand and they're beating Valladolid, already relegated Valladolid. So, uh, yeah, this isn't going well. I've just noticed Bilbao have gone 2-1 up down there as well. So, uh, we really need to pull something out soon. Sanchez having a pretty poor game, so we'll bring on Rolon. Yeah, swap them back round to the way they were. Vallecano still drawing as well. Highlight, first one of the game, and Goy in his last appearance. Dem, Seri, we've got options on the left-hand side. Roll on, bends one, Rulis there with the save, and Goy, his touch is loose, and that the Sociedad defender will get to it. A few shots in the second half, but still really poor. Come on, boys. Valencia 3-0 up, they're... Uh, I think there's pretty much home and dry, especially if Bill Bauer winning as well. Well, there we go then. A real damp squib to end the season. A really boring 0 0 draw. We were so much better than Sociedad, and we've got nothing for it, but no real chances in the game. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry to you. That was really flat, disappointing way to end the season. We finished the season in seventh, so. 
Hitafe ended up drawing Abel Ruiz. They got an equaliser in the 93rd minute. Vaikano ended up losing again to a 93rd minute goal. Atleti drew. Valencia won convincingly. So there we go, 7th place. That wraps up the season. Uh, our worst season in the top flight yet, which is disappointing to say. But if we have a look at how it finished. So 16 wins, 11 draws, 11 losses. A really good goals against record. One of the best in the league. But that goals for record is absolutely dreadful. And it's no surprise really, considering how uh, how poor our strikers have been. Santos had a good second half to the season. But nothing compared to what him and Boney have produced in the previous. Real Madrid, the champions then. Atleti second, Barca third. Sociedad finished fourth, but they've still had a crack in season. Bilbao and Valencia make up the European spots with us just outside. Valladolid, Levante and Cordoba are the teams that get relegated. Remember, we finished seventh. We were expected to finish top half, so we've met our, met our goals. Do we have a look compared to last season? Seven points worse off. And obviously, no European spots. If we have a look at the table below. Uh, so, they've still got three games to go in that one. All the teams have been relegated. Our B team actually got relegated from the third tier. So, uh, yeah, not good. But Girona and Sporting Chicken Gujon have already secured playoff spots. You'd imagine. It looks like one of those two and maybe Las Palmas. But those two certainly look favourites to come up. So there we are then, that is how the season has finished. In terms of our players, if we have a look, appearances, Hermes made the most appearances, 51 games he played for us this season, and Vogo 48, Seri with 51 as well. Really, really enjoyed Michael Seri being here this season. I don't know if Chelsea will let us have him again, but we'll have to wait and see. In terms of goals, Santos with 11, he finishes top scorer, plays 50 games for us in total. Seri with 10 from midfield is a cracking contribution. Muller 8 and then just a smattering of others. But just again, as we've said already, really not as many as we would have liked. In terms of assists, Muller and Cabo 6 apiece. Again, you'd like a few more, but plenty scattered throughout the team. Juan P, Boney, Hermes always co contributed with 4. In terms of average rating, our best player apparently was Flavio Ramos. Uh... He didn't play that many games, so I would have said probably player of the season, Michael Keane. And it says a lot that some of our best players have been um, have been defenders. Sam Powell, I would have said probably last season, was one of our better players. But Michael Keane, he's come in, he's done a really good job for us. Really good acquisition, I think. And again, Muller up there as well, and Vogo, Hermes. Some interest in our players, we'll have to see. How that goes on. I imagine most of the loanees will return to their clubs. But you never know. In terms of transfers. And Vogo is wanted by Premier League clubs. Ramos, Udinese, Sampao. Wanted by some decent teams. Sociedad in there as well. Might be hard to turn down the Champions League. Hermes by Newcastle as well. So uh, yeah. Boney on his way out obviously. Piatek on his way in. But that is going to bring today's episode. And this season to a close. I hope you've enjoyed it guys. I certainly have a little bit disappointing finish to this season in terms of finishing 7th. But hopefully we can kick on with no European football to distract us next season. Maybe we can have a, a season like we did with our first season in the top flight and finish 3rd. Seems unlikely but you never know. Anyway, like I said, that is going to be it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please drop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for the new season. I hope you are looking forward to it as much as I am. Again, I'll leave a link to the uh, FM Discord, FM Creators Discord in the description. If you haven't already coming in, come on in and join us. Some good people in there, plenty of content, plenty of streamers, and uh, yeah, a load of good people to have a good chat with. And uh, thanks for joining me, guys. I will see you in the next one.